Dear Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity of this day. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. And our cups do runneth over, Father. We owe it all to you. To this we give thanks. And Father, we have these unspoken prayers before you at this time. You know every heart, every need, every wish, every dream, every concern. And we thank you for not only hearing these prayers, but we thank you for answering them in perfect season. And Father, we also have these prayers before we pray for the Wards and the Gibsons, June's family, Taylor, Cindy, Timmy, Harley's work, Harley, and all who are hurting and suffering, Father. We ask, dear Lord, that you lead, that you guide, that you direct, that you touch, and that you heal in Yahshua's precious holy name. And as always, Father, we pray for all those who have come and gone from our chapel, that you watch over them. We pray, dear Lord, that they have not forsaken thy word, and that they will return to the sheepfold soon. And as always, Father, we pray for Israel and our nation, for thy kingdom to come, knowing that it will be thy will that will be done on this earth as it is in heaven, to which we say, Come, Lord, come, for we are ready for what lies before us. And Father, we pray for those first responders every day they are on the front lines helping your children. We pray for their safety and their endurance, as well as our military who are in arms way or who are about to go into arms way for their safety and speedy return home. And Father, we always pray for the lost, those that do not have an opportunity this day to receive thy truth. Now, Father, I pray that you open up our eyes that we may see. I pray that you open up our ears that we may hear thy words as it is written, as it will be you that speaks to us this day. In Yeshua's precious holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. You'll get home all right. I guess. Uh, he's, he's a secretive kind of person, but uh, uh, we went round and round with him about letting us know about future events, but uh, he's, he, he wants to be in that incognito kind of thing, so we'll just give grant him his wishes. Uh, he wants to... Uh, me to notify him about what uh, he gave me some kind of um, some kind of inclination of the end times of of a new uh, nation coming from the north that uh, we haven't talked about and he wanted me to look that up and then give him a call so that I will do um, but also um, What's important is, is in this book of Lamentations that we're continuing in, we ended in chapter 1 with verse 16. Um, we know how the book of Lamentations is basically, a, of course it's a poem, but it's really a sad song about the state of affairs of Israel, the state of affairs of Judah and Benjamin. And wh why do I separate the two? Because uh, Israel, in, in those days, the ten northern tribes were already taken into captivity. Two hundred years prior to Judah and um, Benjamin. And you would think that once Judah and Benjamin saw what took place with the ten northern tribes and why it happened, that it would get their attention. But we know that's not the case. So they're going into captivity as well because of harlotry, idolatry, uh, basically sin against our Father. And have you ever asked yourself or had someone ask you, well, why did Israel and Judah have to pay all this? Why not all the other nations of the world that had to sin? What would you tell them? Because they were the chosen people. They were the chosen people. They were given the gift first. It was up to why? them. Why they were the they were the first fruit. Yes. Why why were they chosen? I don't think there's any rhyme or reason. I think they just. Were I believe there's a, I believe there's a rhyme and reason, but I don't believe there's a rhyme and reason that's written. Well, I believe you know knowing the first earth and first heaven age, 
of who actually stood by our father. Okay. Uh, that's that's the only inclination, which I can't document. Mm -mm. I can't document that they did. I don't know what anybody did then. And who yes. knows the mind of God? Well, Father, Father, need, Father put us all where we are mm -hmm. and put us in line for what happens with us as far as what nation we're in and all that stuff. So, mm -hmm. and it, they're the apple of his eye. So he knew that, I think, from, like you say, from the first or I do too, but again, I can't document that. Right. See, it's, it's hard, it's easy for us to come together as a group and say, well, this is what I believe and why I believe it, but it's not written. But for the camera audience or for those that are, are layman terms, that doesn't mean that they're stupid by any means. It just means that they're not fully biblically knowledgeable. Not that we are, but we've been studying a great deal of time. And we put a great deal of effort into it. And we, and we allow the Holy Spirit to, to lead, guide, and direct us. So, with that being said, when you place your heart with our Father, He will privy you with information that everybody has, but not everybody can understand. You know, And that doesn't put anybody else above anybody else by any means. However, if you love God, He loves you. You say, oh boy, He doesn't love all His children. Some children have turned from Him, and He will release them. That's what we're learning here. And what does that mean, release them? That means that he releases his covering over them, his protection over them, his cloud over them. Just like, they, they think about it, they, the Israelites were in the desert for 40 years, and they had a cloud above them in the middle of the desert where there's no during rain the during the day the to protect them. And a pillar of fire. And of course we know, we studied that that was Christ going before them. And they were following Christ. However, they turned from that. They turned from that protection. You say, well, if I was there, well, I understand knowing what we know, it's, what is that, what's that saying? Hindsight. Hindsight is always twenty twenty. But here we are today. <coughs> and... I don't know about anybody else in this room, but I've turned a few times and had to turn around and come back. Mm -hmm. I get, I have, there were whole patches in my life where I want to go party, I want to do this, I want to do that. But why? Why, why allowed, did you turn, but no, I'm saying why did you turn back? Because he calls you. Okay. And you know the outcome of disobedience. Well, yeah. You believe in that. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just as we believe in the kingdom of God and the blessings that we will receive because of obedience, we also believe on the other side of that coin that if we are continuously disobedient, that we will be chastised and corrected. How much? That really depends on us. You know. and, and the fact is, this is what our Father is doing here through Jeremiah. He's letting the people know. Now it's to the point where they're in, going to go into captivity. This is really the transition period. We're going to be talking about them and also about uh, Israel, who is already in captivity at this point. But before that ever took place, our father laid out the rules. He laid out saying, look, don't do these things. <laughs> Don't sin against me. You're my chosen people. I've chosen you to do what's right. Now, are there chosen people today? Yes. What are they called? Jews. <laughs> <laughs> well, say that again. The elect. the elect. Are the Jews still God's chosen people? Yes. God does. But some change. have been grafted into that. Correct. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're. Jews born in Judea, no. but Jews by a graft into right. the family, right? Just as Christ was a Jew, mm -hmm. you know, because where he was born, right? Um, so the point being is, is that we need to understand that all this stuff that's happening to them isn't out of the blue. 
it's no surprise to them what's happening. <laughs> and it should be no surprise to us today what will happen if we are not obedient to our Father. Now, some people don't want to do that. They don't want to be obedient to anybody. They want to be their own person. Well, guess what? Obeying our Father doesn't mean that you give up your individuality. It just means you don't want to walk in the ways of the world anymore. You can be just as individual from anybody else. Would you say Jeremiah was an individual from, from all the other groups at the time? Of course he was. You know. So, our Father doesn't want us to be cookie-cutter Christians. However, there are certain things that all of his children must do. And that's be obedient to his word, his laws. So with that being said, please pick up your Bibles. Let us continue our studies in Lamentations chapter 1 with verse 17 with wisdom from our Heavenly Father. And it reads, Zion spreadeth forth her hands. Now, what's Zion? Israel. Jerusalem? It's Jerusalem. Actually, Jerusalem. Okay, just be careful. Yeah. And there is... Now, what does it mean, spread us forth her hands? Well, listen. And there is none to comfort her. In other words, uh, she's crying out. Yeah. Now, we got to understand what's taking place here. And I'm going to be a little graphic. But the thing is, they're, well, they're almost to the point... There's no food. There hadn't been no food for a while. They're eating grass and, 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 and worms, whatever they can find. But it got to the point where they're eating their own young. Mm -hmm. Nine inches and smaller. Oh, God. Yes. Where is that at? Well, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. They they actually did this. Oh. Well, yeah. Because there was no food. Oh. And everything else was gone. Oh. They put a siege around it. There, there, you couldn't get in or out. No food whatsoever. Even the grass and the worms were gone. Yes. Now see, how? I, and here's another thing. How do we know this actually happened? Well, I believe totally in the Bible. Well, yeah. Totally. Some people want to pick and choose what they want to believe in the Bible. That's up to them. But the thing is, in modern day science, there have been excavations well, yeah. in that region. Yes. And one of the uh, things that they excavated was the, um, what's the word, the feces mm -hmm. of, of the kings mm -hmm. at the time. And what they checked into the, all this stuff, I know it sounds kind of gross, mm -hmm. but they found out what they were eating. Mm -hmm. And it, guess what? It showed exactly what the Bible has foretold that they did. Mm -hmm just by their excrement. Mm -hmm. mm. So, let's not, let's not overlook and what's taking place. And also historical known facts that the Babylonians came and did this. I mean, yes. it's documented. Yes, There's other, like other avenues. And everything else. Other avenues as well. Mm -hmm. History goes So, there, there's none to comfort her. <coughs> the Lord hath commanded concerning Jacob. Now, at this particular moment, can, baby, can you turn that that air down just a little bit so it won't keep coming on, please? Thank you. And the Lord hath commanded concerning Jacob. Now, when you see this concerning Jacob, it's not talking about an individual. No. It's talking, Jacob is talking about the ten northern tribes. Mm -hmm. So this is something that's already happened. Right. Okay. At this point. The Lord hath commanded concerning Jacob that his adversaries should be round about him. Jerusalem is as a menstruous woman among them. So he's, he's basically classifying Jerusalem doing the same exact thing that the ten northern tribes had been doing. Now this is as a menstruous woman at this point basically means unclean. Right. They were they were no. being unclean. Okay, that doesn't necessarily mean that a woman Well, it did say times past menstruous women 
they had to be separated. They did. Yeah. Because they were in an unclean condition. They were. So. so but it's a whole different ball game today. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We have other. Well, we have other. Yes apparatus to, to help to things help along. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line here is is that he's he's comparing Jerusalem with um, Zion. Mm -hmm. and he, or, uh, Zion being Jerusalem, but he's comparing what happened to the first, uh, I mean by Jacob, mm -hmm. he's comparing the what happened to the ten northern tribes with what the uh, Benjamin and Judah is doing in the southern region. In other words, to God there's no difference. Okay. They're both being idolatrous. They're both being sinful. Okay. 18. The Lord is righteous. For I have rebelled against his commandment. What did what did Jeremiah mean? I have rebelled against his commandment. Well, our father gave Jeremiah certain things to do at a certain time. And there were times that he just didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Because he was so yeah. ticked off. Yeah. I mean, he was, he was mad at Judah for not adhering. Now, it's something that we need to understand. What, where we don't need to fall into when we're ministering. When you hear something and you tell somebody something about the Word of God and they're totally going against it, going against the Word or whatever, we also have a tendency of getting upset. Mm -hmm. See, we've got to understand, that's not our concern. Mm -hmm. It's not our concern. <coughs> <You> say, <coughs> excuse me, how can it not be your concern? That's Father's concern. Your concern is that you're, if you're led to say something to someone, scripturally, that you say it according to the Word of God. Mm. That's your concern. What happens after that is up to them. Mm -hmm. See? And it's easy for me to, to sit here and say, well, at that point, let go and let God. But, you know, there's sometimes we just don't want to let go. Sometimes we want to keep pursuing the matter. Hmm. It doesn't work that way. In uh, just the opposite, sometimes she's saying, "Look, I want you to go and do it like with Jonah." So I want yes. you to go. To, uh, no, I don't want to. <laughs> yes, you're going to. No, I don't. And, well, same with Jeremiah. Yes. You know, I want you to do this and that and the other. And, oh, I don't think that's. Ah, uh, you know, I've tried that. Lord. <laughs> you know, I, I've been down that road. You know, it's, they ain't listening. It's hard. It is hard. But it says, I have rebelled against his commandment. Here I pray you, all people, and behold my sorrow. My virgins and my young men are gone into captivity. At that point he's being prophetic. And he's talking about Zion. He's talking about Jerusalem. He's talking about Judah. He's talking about Benjamin. And he's saying, all those that were with God have turned from him and now gone into captivity. Oh. 19. I called for my lovers. Now, lovers are who? Do you remember? Those Your are allies. Allies. Who they thought were their allies. Yeah. I called for my lovers, but they deceived me. I went to Egypt. Egypt said, hey, I got your back, Jack. Yeah, of course, I paraphrase. But the point being is, they didn't have Israel's back. They even went as far as getting halfway there and then turned around. Good Why did they turn around? I, well, there's, I guess, two answers to that. What? You could say it's God's will, but they were had, they had a, like a little secret meeting, I think, between the Babylonians and the Egyptians, and they said, look, if you'll just stand aside, we'll split some stuff up with you, and we won't harm you, and... But you're, that's that's what happened. Yes. But the thing is, the reason that happened is because God moved in the enemy's heart. Mm -hmm. Just deep. like he, God moved in Pharaoh's heart. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people say, well, Pharaoh was being stubborn. No, it says in Scripture, this is when Israel was, was uh, in 400 years of bondage, and mm -hmm. Moses was there saying, let my people go. 
Well, the thing is, I think it was after the second or third plague, Pharaoh was going to release him. <laughs> but it was our father heart who heart. hardened his heart. I have a, like a. Have you ever had those snap epiphanies? You know, when you read something in the Word and it, um, everything, it's a whole thought it, in one fell swoop. That's the Holy Spirit, yes. <laughs> and I, we we were just reading this, and I got my virgins and my young men are gone into captivity, and as clear as a bell in my head, it said everyone that leaves God is led into captivity. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Everyone is in captivity. Right. They may not be in Israel, but they're in captivity. Yeah, they're in bondage sometimes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, how do we say it? Nineteen. <laughs> I called for my lovers, but they deceived me. My priests and mine elders gave up <laughs> the ghost, or basically means gave up the spirit in the city. Mm -hmm. They they gave up. Now, now tell me, when you're with God, who is a majority, I don't care how small a group, would you ever give up? Ever. If God says, this is what I want you to do. I mean, you would go in the lion's den, wouldn't you? If he called you to do it. Oh, he'd have to strengthen see, me to do it. Huh? Well, that's the point. He would. See, that's the point. But the elders and the priests, they're supposed to be leading the people, gave up. Their spirit was gone. While they sought their meat to relieve their souls. Mm -hmm. Where's God in this? Mm -hmm. See, they're trying to make their own path here mm -hmm. without God. It's very important to understand. Without God, they're trying to make their own path. Behold, verse 20, O Lord, for I am in distress. My bowels are troubled. Mine heart is turned within me. You see, the bowels, and we'll get later in this uh, scripture, liver, the heart, is thought to be the center of all emotion. Mm -hmm. um, without getting too graphic, when you're really upset about something, don't you seem to have a little problem in the yes. Yes. bowel area? Yes. yes. You know, or the heart area? Yes. yes. Or the liver area? Something. It's turned within me, for I have grievously rebelled. Remember last week, grievously sinned. I have grievously rebelled. Abroad the sword bereaveth. That means outside where we are right now, all around us, they're killing our children. They're killing our, our fathers. They're killing our virgins with the sword. You know, because anybody that would leave the area would be killed. Well, guess what? They were being killed in the city yes. by famine. Right. By famine. In other words, they were paying the price. At home, where they were, there is as death. Because they're dying. They're starving to death. Now, now think about being between a rock and a hard place. Well, if I stay here, I'm going to die. If I go out very slowly, if I go out there, hey, at least it'll be quicker. But I'm going to die anyways. But see, the human body wants to survive. Well, yeah. It just wants to survive. If, you, if you've never seen anyone that's uh, been critically injured... They try. They, yeah, up to the last breath. You know. <clears throat> and I don't care what kind of person they are either. 21. They have heard that I sigh. That's all the nations around them. You say, well, how could they hear? They were, they were surrounded... Let me tell you something. Yes, they didn't have television and radio, but there were all kinds of people and all kinds of information. Would There were still caravans going around. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many caravans probably were going to Jerusalem right. that they didn't even know what was happening? They'd just show up and all of a sudden there's, yeah. here's the army all surrounded. I mean, there's all kinds of word that would get out. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is talking about. They have heard, this is heard Jeremiah, that I sigh. There is none to comfort me. 
none on earth. All mine enemies have heard of my trouble. They are glad that thou hast done it. They are glad that God allowed this to happen. Why? Because they're those Cause enemies. They hate Jerusalem. <laughs> they hate God's children. Thou will bring the day that thou hast called. You're going to you're going to allow this to happen exactly as you told us it was going to happen. And they shall be like unto me. And final verse in that chapter one twenty two, let all their wickedness come before thee. And do unto them <laughs> as thou hast done unto me for all my transgressions. See, he's he's not just saying, you know, kill the enemy, kill the enemy. No, he's saying, look, all those sinners out there that are sinning against you, may they get the same reward or punishment as we're getting. For my sighs are many and my heart is faint. So, Jeremiah at this point basically the prophet Jeremiah is living the emotions that the people are experiencing. But guess what? Jeremiah is experiencing right along beside them. I mean, he's there with them. You know, he, he went through the family. He didn't have nothing to eat either. And think about it. When he's a prisoner, they're supposed to feed him. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. as a prisoner, yeah, by their law, but they had nothing to feed it with. So where did his sustenance come from? Our Father. No, they used to get on Jesus. The, the, the uh, <coughs> disciples used to get on Jesus all the time. Lord, you need to eat more. <laughs> you need to eat. Because he hadn't ate all day. He had been preaching. Or he hadn't ate several days. Lord was... See, the Lord did, didn't look at food like people do. <laughs> yeah. is, did his body need food? Yeah. Yes. Yes. It would have without him eating at all he would have died. Because he was a flesh man. But he was so and full water. Of spirit that But he didn't look at it as we did. He just he used food as a tool just to keep going. Exactly. Not mm -hmm. something that's over abundance. And and we know now today that all these things all these things that are happening here is happening again. Mm -hmm. You say, it's going to get that bad? What do you think? Yeah. I mean, really. What do you think? Oh, it would never get bad. Back oh, to yeah. that famine and that kind Look of famine and stuff. in the world right now. People are starving to death as we speak yeah, in exactly. the world today. In many places. Well, does that mean that they don't have God? That's not... I don't know. I'm not going to say that. But I will tell you this, our Father gives us signs and He uses people at times to give us signs. Well, right here we're reading. If you've got war and famine going all, all, all around you, chances are there isn't God. And earthquakes, and fires, I mean, and flooding. I mean, there's things flooding right now that's never flooded before. And I'm not talking, I'm not talking about a little, little rise in the water. I'm talking about floods, man, where there's everything. No. Did you hear the flood? Of, what was it, Indiana? Yeah. Yeah, Indiana. Yeah. Indiana, Louisiana, both of them. I mean, I can understand Louisiana because they're below sea level. I mean, come on, wake up, people. You're living below sea level next to the sea. But Indiana's Indiana no. landlocked, so how in the world does it flood? <laughs> but point being is things are happening in the world today to get people's attention. But you know, it's got their attention, but I don't know that it's necessarily turning their hearts to God. I didn't say it was. Okay. Did it turn their hearts to God? No. They, they just saw ten, ten of their brothers and sisters, ten tribes, millions of people go into captivity because of what <coughs> they themselves were still doing. So did it turn their hearts? No. We've read the end of this book. 
we know that there's going to be a lot of people that will still jump on the Antichrist bandwagon when he gets here. So, does that mean that God should just stop trying to get people's attention? He'll never stop. He's told us, I will never forsake thee. I will never leave thee. But it's the people that leave him True. that suffer. Yes. Well, these people <laughs> left God. Now, some people say, well, wait a minute now. God shouldn't do this. <laughs> Who are we to tell God what to do? I understand. Yeah. But they say, oh, it's a loving God. Well, still, we don't... How can God. this be a loving God? He's trying to get them not to perish forever. Exactly. And people don't want to click onto that and understand that. They don't understand that this... All this stuff, as, as, as hard as it was and all the years that it took, is still just a, a, a moment, a drop of bucket in time. To him. To him. And would a loving God make you and control every aspect of your life, or would he give you free will? That's right. Because you can't love him without free will. Right? So, continue in chapter 2, verse 1. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger? Mm -hmm. What do you think that means? Different cloud this time. Huh? Different cloud this time than the one that was in the Egypt desert. It's a complete covering, just like it was in Egypt. Yeah, but that was to protect you. This isn't. Exactly. That's what I mean. It's a different cloud yeah. this time. Because it says mm -hmm. cloud in his anger. Right. And cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel. What is he casting down? What was Israel supposed to be? His priest, uh, the most beautiful place in all of creation. People, people were and will in the end, at, at at the end days or after the end days, when we're in spiritual bodies, will want to go to Mount Zion mm. because that's where God is, and they'll want that 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 beauty and that. And that, that peace and that love that's there. But see, because of Israel's uh, indignation, because of their sin, because of their idolatry, and I'm when I say Israel, I'm talking about the northern and the southern tribes. Because of this, Father has cast them down. And remember not his footstool in the day of his anger. What what would this footstool be? The earth. The ark of the covenant. Oh. Yeah, the earth is his footstool. But the point being is, at that point, this is God was supposed to be in the temple. Yes. And the ark of the covenant was supposed to be in the holy of holies. Yeah, but now neither one of them is there. Because this would be what's classified the day of his anger. Two. And why is he angry? You know why he's angry. Because the way his children are behaving. Two. The Lord has swallowed up all the habitations of Jacob. All the tribes. And hath not pitied hath not pitied. What does that tell you? That our our father doesn't love his children anymore? No, that he's mad he's going to make he's them. He's going to correct them. Yes. But you know what? Think about this. He did that for us. Yes. Because he doesn't want the generation after generation after generation to fall as they fell. And he hasn't pitied. He hath thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He hath brought them down to the ground. He hath polluted the kingdom and the princes thereof. That's the rulers. How did he pollute it? Well, just like us. Huh? Well, just like us. 
Well, mm. we this if you really look at this with understanding and and follow it, this is like reading tomorrow's newspaper. Mm -hmm. It really is. It that sounds just like our government. Yeah, what we got look and look look yeah. to look forward to is a bunch of. That's why I say it doesn't really matter who gets in office. No. Not really. Because this nation, until they turn <laughs> back to God, you say, well, you're judging. You doggone right I am. <laughs> and I mean, if I, if I see a people's in mass majorities turn from God and follow everything else under the sun, if you want to call that judging by God, call it judging. Because that's what I see it as. And let me tell you something. That's what our Father sees it as. And, and the th things would not be happening, what's happening in this nation today, if more people were following our Father. If, this, if, the, if our government would follow our Father. But you see, our government is only what the people were 20 years ago. Well, That's who's in charge now. It's only what the people want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Father is giving us what we want. Yeah. You say, well, how? What do you mean by that? He's people want to live without God. He's giving them what they want. Yeah. Because our Father says, "All right, with me, you will rise above every negative thing in the world. Without me, you're going to be down." With everything in the world, you're gonna you're gonna turn in. There's no help if you if you if you turn. There's no help for you. There isn't. There's no consolation. There's no comfort. There's nothing. Like what I was talking about last week, and I've talked about it before. The God hole, <laughs> where there's an emptiness there, and you're trying to fill it. You don't you don't call it a God hole. You don't even call it anything because you don't know there's anything wrong. But you're constantly searching for something to fill, to make your life worth meaning. Now, I don't mean to joke at that, but how many times have you heard people say, Oh, what's the meaning of life? Or, why am I here? I mean, with God, you know these things. You know why you're here. And you know what you're supposed to be. You may not know what position at times as you're growing up, you know, well, I don't know what the Lord's got in store for me, you know, but I know I'm going to be doing something. But other people say, oh, poor me. I'm, I'm destitute. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not happy at anything. And they're not. Well, living with God is like having an adventure. You never know where this is going to take you. You never know what's going to happen. It's an adventure. Well, that's true, but you know the ending. Well, yeah, but it, the, the journey along the way is a pure deed adventure. <laughs> but and, and when I say ending, I'm talking about ending the flesh. Yes, I understand. People, people just, they just don't, they just don't want to let go and let God. And that's what's happened here. And these are people who knew God. Let's not over, over. I don't want to overemphasize this. Well, that's the scariest part of the whole thing. They knew God, and they turned from Him. They knew of His protection and His love. And their 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 claim to fame, so to speak, but they turn from it all. Makes no sense. Just doesn't make any sense. But the same thing's happening today. Verse three, am I? Mm -hmm. He hath cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. What's horn? Power. Huh? Power. Power. He hath drawn back his right hand. What's his right hand? Power. Also power. He hath drawn back his right hand from before the enemy. And he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire which devoureth round about. He's ticked off. He's just ticked off. And he should be. He chose them. He took a personal interest in their welfare. He taught them. He sent prophets. He sent judges. He sent all these people to straighten them out. After they kept rebelling, 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 rebelling. And every once in a while, they'd get it together. And they had a good leader. And they followed that leadership. But see, 
God knew what would happen when they first wanted a man king. Yes. He told them all what would happen. You forsake me. You don't want me as your king. I mean, I'm go I'm gonna I'm gonna spread it all out for you. You're not gonna have an enemy on this planet because I'm your God. But you don't want me as your king anymore. So this is what's gonna happen. And then when they, uh, God appointed a man king, he even told them that, all right, you dummies, not a paraphrase, all right, you dummies, you picked a man king, I'm still going to take care of you if you follow my rules. And that's all. I'm, and what rules are really hard to follow? Seriously. What of God's commandments is hard to follow? Really? He's not asking for the moon. Just ask him for your love. That's all he wants. Because it all comes down to love. If you truly love someone, you're not going to hurt them. You're going to do everything in your power not to hurt them. But they're not doing that. Four. <coughs> he hath bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary, just like the, his power. Think about this. His power is your enemy. God's power is your enemy. Because they chose not to follow him. <laughs> they think Babylon's bad. They think Babylon's powerful. They're going against God now. Because God is against them. Because they're against God. And slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. He poured out his fury like fire. Fire back then, I mean, they didn't have fire hoses and all that and quenched the fire. Fire consumed when it burned. Well, God is that consuming fire. And you go against God, you're going to be consumed. Four. He had, I uh, did for five. The Lord was as an enemy. Think about that. The Lord, to them, because of what they were doing, was as an enemy to them. Could we say that he was on the enemy's side? Well, I wouldn't go that far, but what I would say is he used the enemy to be more powerful than what they actually were. And he caused the hearts and the minds of Judah to weaken to where a few thousand would send them all running when before they'd just snuff them out in a heartbeat. Not even think of, not even send all their troops. They might send 10 people, 20 people to take care of who's coming at them. Can't anymore because of the power of God. I would say the opposite. You're making yourself an enemy of God. He's rephrasing it the other way. God's like an enemy, but that just means you're adversarial to each other. So That's right. go up against him and see what happens. Well, this is what happens. <laughs> Verse 5 continues. He hath destroyed... Well, let me do it in 5 again. The Lord w was as an enemy. He hath swallowed up Israel. He hath swallowed up all her palaces. He hath destroyed his strongholds and hath increased in the daughter of Judah mourning and lamentation. All the negative, all the crying, all the heartache, he's increased it. Now Israel was the northern part? Yes. That was, that was the past tense. He says, I've already wiped them out. And then Judah's the southern part. Yes. This going on right now. Yes. So basically saying like the same thing that happened to Israel is happening to you. Same thing. Why? Because they're doing the same thing. That's why we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt what's about to happen to this nation. <laughs> See this that's why I, I fought against I fought against preaching this mm -hmm. and teaching this book. Did you? I did. Because I know what it meant. And it, it's not a happy song. No. <laughs> no. 
At this point in time. At this point in time, this nation ain't going to get out. I was going to say, there's it. not anything that we can do. Well, there is. Yeah, there is. The same thing Jeremiah was doing, but praying that, yeah. but and I mean, living the word. But other than that. But what do you mean, but? That is what you got to do. See, well, now, 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 now. With that being said, Beck, I want, I, I do want to say this, which I'm going to give at the end of the lecture, a verse that's very apropos here. But even though we know this is going to happen, that does not mean that we need to stop trying to help people. Oh no, no. And it doesn't mean the fact that the man's still writing this means he's surviving it. As whatever's falling all around him. He's not getting starved and killed. There you go. He is getting starved. Talking about Jeremiah? Well, okay, he didn't get starved to death. No, 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 he's no. He's still able to write this. Yeah. <laughs> and he went into captivity with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and didn't get killed. Yeah. So mourning. He's yeah. mourning. Yeah. yeah. Because at this point he realized no one's listening. Yeah. Well, <coughs> no one's listening. <coughs> and that's what I was. No one cares. Trying to get out of my mouth is nobody cares anymore. Nobody wants to hear anymore. But just like Jeremiah, that doesn't mean that we need Jeremiah. Yeah, he he was he was he was devastated. Mm -hmm. But he never stopped praying. That's why, that's why we have this book. He never stopped. And our father will never stop trying to reach his children. Right. Even though he knows what the end's going to be. Right. I talk about love. Well, and there are a lot of people who have been very hurt by different churches. Yes. And I feel like they've been so hurt that they won't hear what we have to say. Until not. Well, see, here's another thing, and maybe this. And it's almost like this really, it's not real, their fault. This really isn't off the record, I guess, because I really feel that as of late, this is why Donna and I have been moved, because we're diligently practicing now music. Okay. And we've both been led that saying the message that we have today to the churches mainstream churches today we won't even get in the door <laughs> but music will now we're mixing the old gospel hymns with our new songs not not the rock songs but we're even changing our old rock songs into gospel hymns again so we're, we're taking all the hard rocking stuff that we're doing, it's all mellowed now. Hmm. And um, we feel very strongly that that's what we're being moved to do, just to plant another seed. Now, we may never, once we go to these different churches and play, we may never be asked to go back again. That's, that's fine. But the seed was already planted. And that's what's important. Mm -hmm. And that's what we really feel right now. Not that we're giving this up. I actually know somebody that told me they were saved not through the word, but through the music. Yeah. I know a couple that's, that's, that's their worship process, is music. Huh. So that's what we're being led to do right now. We're, we've are we got our fingers down. i got my calluses back now. So, um, but now we're, we're, we're on the verge. Right now I'm working with Don on, on bass new base uh, fingering. fingering. That's uh, our next step, and, but she'll pick that up. She's already got half of it already. So uh, it's coming. It's coming. And what better time to play on Sundays? Mm. Oh, yeah. Because we never <laughs> had that opportunity before. Right. Yeah. And Wednesday nights. It's a coming, right. Lord willing. Verse 6. And he hath violently taken away his tabernacle, as if it were of a garden. How is a garden taken away? By drought. Drought. Famine. Famine. famine pestilence. Earthquake. Earthquakes. Rain. Fire. You know, yeah. Fire. Mm. He hath destroyed his places of the assembly, the synagogues. Mm. 
The Lord hath caused the solemn feast and Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion. They're, they're no longer doing them. In Zion. Okay. You don't have a feast when you don't have any food. Yeah. Well, that that's true. <laughs> and also, also uh, this in Zion. Remember, they were taken out of Zion. So they're no like they. The people finally started coming back around to the Lord and started observing his his um, holy days, but they weren't in Zion. After they got taken out of cap into captivity. Into captivity. And hath despised in the indignation of his anger the king and the priest. Mm -hmm. Those rulers. Man king. And those you gotta understand what the priests were doing back then. The priest, if to, to recall, especially in Jeremiah, the priest of the day, not Jeremiah, but the priest of the so called kingdom, were going to the to the king saying, oh, don't worry about the Babylonians. Don't worry about the Chaldeans. Don't worry about all these people. God is powerful. He's going to protect you. You're not going to go into captivity. Don't worry about it. Hmm. We're more powerful. See. But none of that information ever came from our father. It was just them blowing up smoke. Because they weren't in contact with their father, and our father was not in contact with them. Hmm. But they, oh man, they played a big old part. You know, oh, none of this, oh, don't worry about famine and pestilence. Now, Jeremiah's coming in saying, hey, this is going to happen. You can count on it. this. Is, thus saith the Lord. But they'd say, well, thus saith the Lord. This ain't going to happen. Yes. That brings to mind of kind of what goes on today in churches. Of, well, you don't need to worry about the end times and the tribulation. You're not going to be here. Yeah. God's got you. You're gone. You're not going to have to worry yeah. about it. Same yeah. principle. Yeah. Same principle. Yeah, there's an enemy coming. Oh, don't worry about him. Mm -hmm. Hey, you ain't gonna be here. Don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. And the biggest, why would God have told us everything if we were not gonna be here? Yeah. <laughs> well, see, they don't believe that God is saying that because <laughs> because they're not studying to show themselves approved. Right. They're listening to what man is saying about God instead, instead of listening God. to what God is saying about man. How they not want to face it. Well, it's, it's they don't want to change. It's right. only good sense. Well, it was good sense to Jeremiah for them to change, but they didn't. No. All right, what verse? Seven. 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 Hear this: The Lord hath cast off his altar; he hath abhorred his sanctuary. Mm. He hath given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. They have made a noise in the house of the, of the Lord as in the day of a solemn feast. In other words, just like when Israel was there, Judah was there, and just, just worshiping God and praising Him and having a good time in the feast and, and, and all this. Basically, I don't want to say a party, but it was like a, a, a festival party. Well, now all the hooting and hollering <coughs> is from the enemy. And the enemy wasn't even supposed to be in there, ever. They were forbidden to enter. That's the reason he afforded them was because they were polluting. That's right. Mm. Exactly. Eight. The Lord hath proposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He has stretched out a line. Remember I was telling about this line? He has stretched out a line. He hath not withdrawn his hand from destroying. In other words, he said, look, don't cross this. Don't do this negative stuff. Don't do this sinning stuff. Don't, don't worship these other gods. Don't allow the enemy to do certain things. Don't join their party. Here's my line. Don't cross it. But they crossed it. Mm -hmm. Therefore he made the rampart 
What's a rampart? It's a wall or protection. No, a rampart is basically like you got a wall and you build this rampart. It's like a bridge that goes up that wall. You can't you can't bring the wall down so you build dirt on dirt on dirt on dirt until you can get up and go over the wall. Therefore he made the rampart and the wall to lament. They languished together. See, the people wanted to get out of Jerusalem. So they were trying all kinds of different ways of getting out. But they couldn't. Couldn't get out. Nine. Her gates are sunk into the ground. He hath destroyed and broken her bars. Her protection. Her king, notice the lowercase k, her king and her princes are among the Gentiles, meaning among the nations. In other words, they're no different now. They're, no, they're not above the nations of the world. They're part of the world. Right. Yeah. The Babylonian Gentiles were coming to be their king now, taking yeah. them back into captivity. Hear That's this. Hear this, and don't overlook this. The law is no more. Oh dear. There you go. You said you did it. The law is no more. That law I gave you, mm -hmm. it's no more. You you for you forsaken me. You 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 don't want to follow anything that I've laid out. Mm -hmm. So that law I told you, all this stuff. Now it's going to happen. All this negative is going to come at you, and you're not going to be obedient and follow my laws anymore. So the law's, the law's nothing to you. Yes, it's no it's more. It's irrelevant. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. Her prophets. See, her prophets weren't following God. They were saying, thus saith the Lord, you're not going to go into captivity. We're going to defeat the enemy. You're not going to go in famine. You're not going to have pestilence. But Jeremiah knew better. And he told them. But all their, all their big hooplas was completely opposite of what was true. And they took it hook, line, and sinker. They believed it. Why? Why did the people believe false prophets? The same reason they believe false prophets today. Need a pen? Ten. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit upon the ground and keep silence. Keep silence. Why are they keeping silence now? They weren't keeping silence before. Because all this negative stuff's happening to them now. They said it wasn't going to happen. So what can they say? Nothing. They can't say a doggone thing now. Because everything Jeremiah said through 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 God, of course, God through Jeremiah, better said, has come to pass. All those all those uh, elders, those high muckety ducks of the church said it wasn't going to happen. Now it's happened. How can they? They ain't got a leg to stand on. No, and they know it. Now, technically, if you really want to get down to it, according to the law, they were supposed to be stoned to death. If they gave a false prophecy. But guess what? The law is no more. Yeah. They're not obeying the law at all. The law is no more to them. They're not obeying it. They're not following it. But they're dying anyway. Oh, go figure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Have you, have you read all that verse? No, no. not yet. No. Okay. They have cast up dust upon their heads. What does that mean? They're in mourning. Yeah, they're yeah. They're renting their clothes yeah. and putting dust on and hanging their heads. But you see, the morning. they late. crossed the line. And then they, they realize it finally, but it's too late. It is too late. <laughs> For them. They haven't repented at all. Any of it. Wait a minute. Putting dust and hanging their heads and stuff, that's not repentance? Mm -hmm. Not really. No, it's kind of like. You're sorry you did it, but it's you ain't acknowledging it that you know you did something wrong. You're more sorry you got caught at doing it. But you're not asking for yeah. forgiveness. Then <laughs> that you're sorry that you did it. Where have we read yet oh. that anybody's repented? Not yet. Nowhere. 
at all. Mm-hmm. No, they're just sorry that they got themselves. They're in sorry that they got caught. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You mean they're not repenting in this? No. Have you seen it? Have you read it? But I thought let's, that was let's, a, let's, a finish, let's, finish, let's, finish, let's finish the verse. That's they the have girded themselves with sackcloth. Mm-hmm. That's what you're supposed to do. When yeah. someone died. But guess what? The prophets also wore sackcloth. Oh. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. Mm-hmm. Does, does that not mean they were ashamed? It does. Sure. It doesn't say they were Sure ashamed. it does. But it doesn't say they repented. Well, they're right. hanging down. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Them hanging their heads down to the ground at this point is that they ain't, they ain't even strong enough to hold their heads up. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't think anybody in this room has ever been that hungry. But these people are literally, slowly starving to death. To death. So of course they're not happy. Even to the point where, like I talked about earlier, since they're listening now, about their own young. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now this happened. Mm-hmm. That's why it says in verse 11, Mine eyes do fail with tears. My bowels are troubled. My liver is poured upon the earth. Again, this is the bowels, the liver, the heart is thought to be the center of all emotion. And when you're in complete distress, let me tell you, your body rebels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, the first thing that usually happens when problems occur, we start losing a little bit of sleep. But if it continues and continues and gets worse and worse, we literally get sick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. Now ask me how I know this. <laughs> Experience? <laughs> yeah. And it's not a happy place to be. Mm-hmm. Other than it's if it's in a place where you need to get to repentance and get down on your knees and start really being real with our Father. For the destruction of the daughter of my people... Let me read that whole thing again. Mine eyes do fail with tears, my bowels are troubled, my liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people. He's sick. He's sick over this. Literally. Mm -hmm. Because the children and the sucklings, that means the uh, faint, swoon in the streets of the city. Why? They're dying. Slowly dying. No food. Well, they say to their mothers, where is corn and wine? Mm-hmm. Now think about the kids. Mm-hmm. They don't, they say, that's another thing. People say, well, wait a minute now. Children didn't do anything. Children don't know any better. Why have they got to go through this? What would you tell somebody? That's a tough one. I mean, are not the children innocent? I mean, we... we yes. That's God's Word. Yes. They're not... To, and I'm not talking about the older tweens or the teens. I'm talking about children. And the fathers and the mothers brought it down on the children. That's what yeah. I was just about to say. Why? Wait a minute now. The children aren't supposed to suffer. Exactly. No, they're, they're not, not supposed, supposed to. to. They're, they're the first ones to die, though. Because they're, they're not getting fed. Week. Well, but the children aren't supposed to be responsible for the sins of the parents. They're not. They're not. Well, so what, what would you tell somebody who say, brings this up? Well, why, say, why are they suffering? What do you want God to do? Put, put an orphanage outside the city and just bring all the kids out? What's he supposed to do? Those are your children. Those children were raised yes. in, in pagan, paganistic <laughs> ways. So in other words, the children are doing what yeah. their parents are teaching them. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily if they're little babies. Not if they're babies. But they're All right, parents. let's take let's take it to the baby thing then. We can we can say, you know, kids old enough to understand about the ways of the Lord and they're being taught. Yeah, okay, let's suckling. take it to the earth suckling. Or, yeah, they're right they they don't even can even speak yet. They're baby babies. Yes. Maybe some of them can't even walk. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well if they're suckling they probably can't. That's my point. And if they're sucklings and their mother is, is starving to death, then they're starving as well. Oh, absolutely. And why is she No, there's them? no doubt that the babies are suffering. 
But we got to ask why. Because of the parents. Yes. But they're not supposed to suffer what the parents are doing. Here's my answer. I do not know the answer to this question. Well, if the children are weak and smaller, like I said, they're going to die first, thereby being taken out of the equation, thereby no more suffering. Well, that's a... Logical. Well, that's, that's, that's a, a, a rational explanation of a terrible event. Right? Yeah. Doesn't give you any well, let me answer, answer it. Okay. Let me answer it this way. Why, this is the only so way I know how to answer it. The only way I know how to answer it is where is the best place in the world to be? Where's the best place for you to be where there's no more suffering ever again? But the three months that it took to get there where you were dying and suffering, that's okay. I don't think it took three months well, for them to die. Not being I really young, don't. Not being young, that young. Not being that young, but the average person. And, you know, I don't the average person. The average baby. person, but we're talking babies. Babies go out a whole lot quicker. Well, two days of starving ain't no fun either. No, it's not. Okay. But that's what, I'm going to play the devil's advocate here. That's what the people are going to say. I Why understand. would God let them suffer two days? The thing Why is, here, here's the point. You're always going to run across people that are going to want to try to find anything negative they can about God. Hmm. And they're going to use this, yes. among other things, that, to do that. Here is, is another point, that their suffering, children's suffering, is a visual aid to the adult. In other words, they're having to witness this, yeah. and thereby maybe is a tool to try to get them to repent. Yeah. What verse was this? Seventeen? Seventeen? Is it? No. No. Uh, eleven? Eleven. 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 But a lot of times, well, the parents don't see that the kids are suffering. Yeah, yeah a lot when of they're situations. standing there screaming in hunger. Yeah, well, I, they, I, they I will. understand that, but I'm thinking about other things. Yeah. I didn't hear that. I'm other sorry. Situations. Well, in other situations. And she said the parents notice, but sometimes they don't. Yeah. We have it today when you have yeah. the babies born drug addicted and stuff like that. The mothers just keep right on going and the mm -hmm. babies suffer. Why does God let that happen? Well, like I said, what's he supposed to do? Well, the thing is, our father is a merciful father. Mm -hmm. What responsibility is the mother have? And and I, to see one of his ch see our father is not going to look at a baby baby any different than an eighty year old man or woman. Right. That's a soul. He's no respecter for because that's a soul. Those souls are all a certain age, mm -hmm. different subject for a different time. Yeah. So he's going to take them out first because they're innocent. And rightfully so. Mm -hmm. Because they're all going to be taken out one way or the other. Mm -hmm. We're going to end here today, but I do want to, I want to leave you on a positive note. Yeah. Yeah, because this is a hard, this is a hard lesson. Yeah, for sure it is. And this, <laughs> this particular verse I carry with me in my wallet. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I just read it and I forgot actually where it was in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I go over it so many times, I can quote you from the... Uh, the knowledge of it, but I, I couldn't remember <laughs> where it was in the Bible, so I had to go look it up. That's what I was looking up in my in my room. Mm. But Second Chronicles, you've heard this many times, chapter seven, verse fourteen. If my people, yeah. which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their land. What chapter? Second Chronicles <coughs> chapter 7 verse 14. And this is what the verse, one of the verses they used to the state capital in Washington, D.C. Well, sure it is. Yes. It is. People can quote scripture till the cows come home. It's on one of the monuments. But mm -hmm. if they don't live it, that's the key. Right. You must live the word of God in your heart to make it reality to you. People, people today quote and quote and quote, and I'm out of time. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
People quote scripture all day long, and then 99% of the time they take it out of context. Yeah, like rebuilding after 9-11, they quoted the thing that... Had nothing to do off. it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, okay. let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of today. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. I pray, dear Lord, for everyone here today and their families, that you watch over them lead them, guide them, and direct them. And forevermore, we will always give you glory, honor, and praise. For we do love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strengths, and with all our souls. For it is in Yahshua's precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen.